Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you know that we just restored a moderately evil HP 711A tube power supply in the previous episode, with the help of my tube savvy friends. I say moderately evil because it's only 500 volts, and also you can tell from the smile. It ended up working quite well, but 500 volts was not enough to light up our mystery CRT tube. So on we go with the decidedly more evil ones that should go up to 3 kV. I got a whole bunch of them a long time ago from an auction lot, which also contain a xenon lamp sparker. That one was another step of evil going up to 40 kV, good enough to make a terrific one, spark radio. Two, and a spark. Alright. So here is the first of our HP 6516A up to 3 kV, but just 6 milliamps, so perfect for setting CRT tube bias voltages. It's an all solid state and rather simple linear supply, so nothing much to do except for capacitor checking. If the high voltage oil fill caps read good on low voltage testing and don't leak, we should be ok. All the caps pass low voltage testing with flying colors, the oil-filled ones being 1 microfarad right on the dot, so we are good for power-up. But there is a catch, I don't yet have a good high-voltage probe for measuring high voltages. I have one on order, but I did not want to wait, so in the meantime, I made myself one. It's nothing fancy, just a resistor divider. Since you want to maintain the current very low, even at 3 kV, you need a very large main resistor, in my case 100 mega ohms. I did not have such a high voltage, high value resistor, so I made mine out of 10 10 mega ohm resistors in series. Splitting it into many resistors also reduces the voltage across the resistors. Run of the mill metal resistors can take much more than a few hundred volts, so spreading the voltage across many resistors ensures that they all work safely without arcing. A smaller value resistor completes the other leg of the divider, in my case a 1 to 1000 divider. Wrap the whole thing in three layers of shrink wrap, and here you go, a temporary makeshift high voltage probe that you should not make nor use at home. So this one to, turns out to be a linear supply, so we can bring it up slowly. Uh, okay, we have a middle volt, so this is 50 volts. That's not right. It tells me 75 volts. A hundred volts, did I, yeah? There we go, that regulates. Yeah, so okay, so if, I, if I'm too low, I don't even regulate. Let me have it soak for 50 volts. A few minutes later. Okay, nothing's blown up. Oh, and it's 10 volt exactly. Right, this is reading in millivolts what's in volts. It's a 1 to 1000. Right on the money, 20 volts. 30 volts, 40 volts, 50 volts, 60, 70, 80, 900. Okay, then you have to go back to zero. 100 volts, 200, 300, 400, 600. 700, 800, 900. It's pretty close. We want to try the kilovolts. One kilovolt, two kilovolts, and uh, yeah, so you have to do to go to 2.9. 2.9 kilovolts. Okay. And we're trying to bring on a few more of these, I have like five or six, they came in a pallet and uh, a lot of them have the meter that's fallen off. 
and we just discovered why it has this very strong springs that are on, on four pockets here and there's only one left here and you see on the one where it's still standing it has this very thin plastic frame which we try to reproduce by printing one. Do you, do you have one of uh, one of yours? Uh, but we, I, I gave Eric the wrong uh, STL file from the interweb. <laughs> it's for a different instrument. I, I, I bet you you could shrink that one. But it's so strongly put in there that I'm worried that we would break this one. Yeah, this isn't going to work very well because the 3D print, uh, the Z-axis is in this direction and that's very fragile. Mm -hmm. So if we put a lot of force on that edge there, then it'll just simply snap. And obviously a problem that people had in other instruments if they remade that, right? Right, right. So. Uh, but I, just shrink that. <laughs> just shrink it down. I, I, I bet you that's the, that's the same thing but smaller. Several days later. Eric just made an extra one, reprinted it. It has super thin arm, so I'm, I'm amazed he could do it. So here's the replacement. I hope it works, it's super fragile. It didn't make it. It broke. Yeah. It broke. Okay. It broke exactly where you'd think it would break. Oh, oh! So did it break when you were putting the meter in? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm going to use a hybrid technique here, where you use hot glue to hold the meter. And that should do. So I am revisiting one of the HP Hyper supplies because it was slightly oily and here I got the uh, back off and I see some oil. So, so my worry is of course that one of the oil capacitor is leaking but it's on the wrong side. Uh, anyhow, I want to get to the bottom of it, uh, make sure it's not an oil leak from the capacitor. And it's a ro royal pain to get in there, but definitely oil here, so I'm glad I looked. But then what I don't quite understand is that the caps are on the other side, and there's no oil on the side of the caps. And I made my way into there and mystery of mystery, it's dry as a bone around the caps. And and those those caps tested good. So was the oil from outside? That is also bizarre. Let me remove that transformer. Transformer removed and a little bit of oil there. Lots here, some on the side out here, but there's no oil in the transformer, so I do not understand this. If, if it came from the cap, the cap should be oily. It's not, it's completely dry. So I remounted the whole thing, couldn't find any evidence that the oil came from inside. Some faint evidence that it came from outside, but I cleaned it so well you don't see it. There was oil over here. The screws are oily on the outside uh, and it's it's on the opposite side of the cap so I think it came from the, you can even see it here, it came from the outside in. Uh, I wish I could be sure uh, but I really see no evidence of anything leaking out of the capacitors at all. So we're going to close it back and uh, be semi comfortable with it okay and i repaired the switch when i was at it there we go three kilovolts so back to the task at hand trying to get some light out of our mystery crt to check the color we wanted to try a minimum setup with just one supply normally this tube needs 17 and a half kilovolt acceleration voltage we tried it with 500 volts in the previous video, but that was not enough. 
So new improved but dodgy setup. Approved by tube time. Yes. Uh, so f we are, for now we're just going to do try to do just filament voltage and acceleration voltage with more acceleration. And back there we have filament. Um, actually, you you wrote it down here, right? Well, we're not building it exactly to that diagram, right. but. But we have filament here. We have high voltage over here, and we grounded the grid. And what else did we ground? We didn't ground any of these, right? We grounded the cathode too. We grounded the cathode. We grounded the grid. We grounded the outside of the tube, and that's it. And all those are floating at the moment, which is not ideal. Not we'll ideal. See if that will work, and then. If it doesn't, we'll we'll do some more. We have more voltages. Let's let's see how our filament lights up should here. give you filament. It's hard to see actually. It's very well protected. You can only see through the hole at the back of the um, uh, connector over there. Yeah, I can see it. So we have. All right. So let's turn the lights off. Yeah, I see. Did I see it? No, I saw nothing. Yes. No, that's just the. Oh. Well, we can no, go up no. to a higher voltage. Huh. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, it's orange. It is oh, orange. Oh, darn. Okay, I can put some more. So that's what we thought it was. So that's what Al told us. So okay. Al was right. It's just the wrong color. Let's uh, let's get Master Ken. Master Ken, yeah. color test. Yeah, that, that looks orange. Um, I was afraid of that this was an orange uh, tube. So how many volts did you get it? Uh, it started to glow at 2K, 2 kilovolts. We have not hooked up the acceleration. Right, we could hook up 500 volts right. to that first anode and then we right. should see maybe a little bit more brightness. Let's try to do that because we have the power supply here. Sounds good. Okay, so uh, we have now connected the anodes some positive voltage, 500 should be enough. Sounds good to me. Should extract more electrons and give us the brightness we're missing. And we'll Hopefully. let focus float so that we don't get a really small spot because that could burn a hole through the phosphor at the front of the screen. Yeah. So that's our final test setup. Filament, cathode, first grid and tube rim to ground. First anode to 400 volts, focus electrodes floating and final acceleration to two kilovolts. All right, so right now, that's the same as before. Okay, let me put this one on. Yeah, so we have it, but it's, oh yeah, oh, oh, mix, oh, yeah it's immediate. All right, this is what we were missing. And then it's orange. So tube works, and as Al thought it would be, it is orange. So if we put that in the alto, we'll have an orange screen, which would look really bizarre. Yeah, that's too bad. strange. If you put a magnet over there, you should be able to move it, right? Oh yeah, that's move right. It, move it. All right, we got our answer, and CRT tubes are a lot of scary fun. But as a bonus, I now have a whole bunch of high voltage bias sources. So why don't we try to light up a few of the CRT tubes I have in my collection, but correctly this time, with the correct voltages for each electrode, so we can explain what they each do, and have a bit more CRT fun. See you in the next episode!